Hey guys, and welcome back for another video. Today I'd like to talk to you guys about how to get the Night Fury skin, or the shoulder skin that replaces your shoulder skin with a bunch of bats that swarm around your character. And before we go ahead and get started on any of that, I just wanted to make mention of a few things. Firstly, you should probably look at this craft as a long-term goal, meaning don't really concern yourself with trying to grind this all out during the Halloween festival, rather just focus on small incremental goals and eventually you'll unlock this skin. There are some items that you can pick up on the trading post as an alternative to having a certain crafting discipline at a particular level, and so if you really don't have a ton of crafting disciplines, no worries as you can bypass a lot of these requirements. Of the many many items we'll be talking about that all go into the Night Fury skin, only two of these are actually obtained during the Halloween festival. Both the Endless Bottle of Batwing Brew, as well as the Tattered Batwing can only be obtained during this festival just something I thought I would throw out there for your information in case you're really only focused on getting the absolutely necessary components from Halloween before the festival ends. Now as I said earlier, there are certain prerequisite crafting disciplines, so let's go over those real quick. Whether or not you're willing to use the trade post to purchase certain items will bypass a couple of these, but you will need level 400 armorsmith, level 400 huntsman, level 400 jeweler, and you'll need at least one crafting profession maxed out to 500, and that would be any of the armor or weapon oriented crafts. I'll be addressing each one of the items that can be used to bypass some of these requirements as we get to them, but if you're ever curious as to which crafting professions can make a particular craft, just look at the top of the screen whenever I show any given crafting recipe. Now with all that out of the way, let's move on to the core recipe for the Night Fury. In the Mystic Forge, you will need one endless bottle of Batwing Brew, one Gift of Darkness, one Vision Crystal, and one Preserved Batwing. First, let's talk about the Endless Bottle of Batwing Brew. Put simply, this is just a drop out of the trick-or-treat bags you earn from doing nearly anything during the Halloween festival. Now this is an item that you can get on the trading post if you want to get around the RNG element of this particular item, since it is one of the four final items required to make the Night Fury. Next up, you're going to need the Gift of Darkness, and that's going to run you one Gift of Ascalon, 250 Ori Calcum Ingots, 250 cured hardened leather squares, and 100 onyx lodestones. Before we can get into how to acquire each of those items though, you'll need the recipe for the Gift of Darkness, and that can be acquired for 10 gold at the vendor right next to the Mystic Forge. Additionally, you will need at least a level 400 armorsmith, and unfortunately this is one of those crafting requirements you can't get around. First, for the Gift of Darkness, you'll need a Gift of Ascalon, and this can be purchased from a vendor near the Fort Mariner's Waypoint in Lion's Arch. Just head over to the vendor, and for 500 Ascalonian Tears, you can purchase the Gift of Ascalon. Ascalonian Tears, of course, are the dungeon token rewarded from completing certain explorable paths of the Ascalon Catacombs dungeon, or if you've completed the story mode for that dungeon, you can use PvP or World vs. World reward tracks to get these tokens as well. Next up, you'll need 250 Ori Calcum ingots, and these can be refined out of 2 Ori Calcum ore. To acquire the Ori Calcum ore, you'll just need to mine some Ori Calcum nodes out in the open world. These can also be salvaged from level 70 to 80 heavy armor or certain weapons, and are often a drop from level 80 loot bags. After that, you're going to need 250 cured hardened leather squares, and for this, you'll just again need to refine 3 hardened leather leather sections. Since there aren't exactly any leather nodes in the game, your best bet here would just be to hope for some to drop out of some level 80 loot bags, or again you can salvage level 74 through 80 medium armor. Lastly, for the Gift of Darkness, you're going to need 100 Onyx Lodestones. Now, just like some of these other items, your best bet is probably going to be to loot these out of some level 80 loot bags. Personally, I've had some pretty okay luck looting these out of some fractal chests and just by doing fractals in general. And because this is one of those items you can't necessarily reliably farm, it might be best just to find a good 
good way to earn some gold and purchase these off the trading post. Now that you have all the required items, make sure you have your recipe unlocked, head over to your level 400 armor smith, and craft your gift of darkness. Just a quick something to keep in mind for anybody out there looking to craft the twilight greatsword, the gift of darkness is also required in that craft, so just something to keep in mind. The next item we'll need for our night fury is a vision crystal, and this is a pretty typical item when it comes to crafting ascended armor and weapons, so if that's something you're already familiar with, I'll leave a timestamp down below. That being said, in order to craft a vision crystal, you're going to need one of your weapon or armor crafts at the max of 500. Additionally, you'll need 5 bloodstone brick, 5 dragonite ingot, 5 empiral stars, and 1 augur's stone. For the bloodstone brick, dragonite ingot, and empiral star, the recipe is pretty much identical except for some of the core resources. For each brick, ingot, or star, you'll need 2 obsidian shards and 10 thermocatalytic reagents. The only thing that changes are those core resources, so if you wanted to make a bloodstone brick, you're going to need 100 piles of bloodstone dust. For dragonite ingots, you're going to need 100 dragonite ore. And for empiral stars, you're going to need 100 empiral fragments. A great one-stop shop for all of those core resources is going to be the Silver Waste Meta Event Farm. Now, I've already made a video on the Silver Waste Meta Event Farm, so I'll just include that in the description for anybody who needs any help with that. In addition to those core resources, you'll also be looting something called Bandit Crests. You'll be using those to open the chests to get your loot at the very end of that farm, but you can also use this at any of the vendors to purchase some obsidian shards. Obsidian shards can be obtained a wide variety of ways at this point, but I think the best method outside of maybe simultaneously picking some up in the silver waste while you're getting some of those other resources would be to go to the Bitter Frost Frontier Living World Season 3 map, and here you can harvest some winter berries that will give you some unbound magic. Additionally, you can consume the winter berries you harvest for even more unbound magic, and once you're done, you can return to the unbound magic vendor, and for a little bit of gold and 100 unbound Unbound magic, you can start buying obsidian shards. The best part about this farm is that it's character bound, so you can just keep switching characters and farming these up. Again, I've done a video on this farm as well, so just look down in the description. Lastly, to craft our bricks, ingots, or stars, we're going to need some thermocatalytic reagents, and those can actually just be purchased from any master crafter vendor. Once you've gathered up all of these items, head over to your level 500 crafting discipline and start creating your bloodstone bricks, dragonite or an empiral stars. Once you have five of each, it's now down to the last item to create our vision crystal, the auger stone. This item can be picked up back at the vendor right next to the mystic forge, and this is going to cost you 20 spirit shards. Now, spirit shards are earned three a day for completing your daily or any time that you would gain a level after level 80, as long as you're not currently working on any masteries. Now that you have all four items required, head back to your level 500 crafting discipline, and now you can craft your vision crystal. We're now three of the four items required to make the Night Fury, and unfortunately, this brings us to our final and probably most expensive item, the Preserve Batwing. This is going to be a Mystic Forge recipe that requires one Batwing, 250 Glacial Lodestones, 250 Linseed Oil, and one Vial of Green Goo. So first, we're going to need a Batwing, and that's going to require four items all on its own. Firstly, you're going to need four Tattered Batwings, 20 Bloodstone Bricks, 120 Vials of Powerful Blood, and 250 Mystic Coins. For the Tattered Batwings, you're going to need to complete the Ascent to Madness dungeon only available during Halloween. The dungeon is three floors, and on that final third floor where you typically defeat the Mad King Thorn, there should be a chest, and in that chest you have a chance to get a Tattered Batwing. Again, like with that endless bottle of Batwing brew, there is some RNG here, so if you'd like to get around that just by farming up some gold, you can purchase these off the trading post. Next up, we need 20 bloodstone bricks, and fortunately, we do know how to make those since you need them for the vision crystal. 
Just be sure to use that silver waste farm as well as that winterberry farm and you should have no problem making 20 more. After that you need 120 vials of powerful blood. Like with a lot of the other lootable crafting materials in Guild Wars, this is probably best to just be purchased off the trading post or accumulated over time. This because like previous items, your best bet here is to loot these from kills in game or from loot bags from completing content. Lastly, for your Batwing, you're going to need 250 Mystic Coins. These can be acquired through your daily login reward. Every 28 day cycle in game is the equivalent of 20 Mystic Coins, so do the math on that. These are also a drop that you'll sometimes get out of the Fractal Daily Chests, and are also available on the trading post, but are fairly expensive. My recommendation here is just to try and earn as many as you can, and if you get close and you don't mind spending the gold, you can go ahead and purchase the rest. Once again, I do feel the need to tell you that Mystic Coins are used in legendary recipes, so if that's something you're going for, maybe don't use the Mystic Coins you have or that you intend to earn. Once you have all four of these items, head back to the Mystic Forge and create your Batwing. Next up, to create the preserved Batwing, we're going to need 250 Glacial Lodestones, and much like the Onyx Lodestones, you're going to be getting these from Fractals and Level 80 Loot Bags, and again, if you want to farm these specifically, you're probably better off just farming gold and buying these off the trading post. After the Glacial Lodestones, you're going to need 250 vials of linseed oil. Each vial is going to run you 20 piles of flax seeds, 5 milling stones, and 1 milling basin. The piles of flax seeds can be harvested in any of the expansion maps, so if you own either two of the expansions, you can pick these up just by doing some daily farms. I don't actually have a flax farm guide, but I will leave in the description a link to whatever the best flax farm video I can find is. For your milling stones, these are a drop from, again, some expansion content, but you can also just pick these up on the trading post, and I'd actually recommend using the trading post because they're only a couple of copper a piece. Lastly, for your milling basin, you can just pick this up at a master chef. Head over to a level 400 crafting discipline of choice, and here you'll be able to make your vial of linseed oil. Lastly, for your preserved Batwing, you're going to need one vial of green goo. This, of course, being our last item, does require another four items in order to create, as well as a level 400 Huntsman. Now, if you don't have Huntsman and you're not interested in leveling it up, you can purchase the vial of green goo directly from the trade post. But if you happen to have a Huntsman already leveled up, you can create one vial of green goo for 20 globs of ectoplasm, 50 pristine toxic spore samples, 50 vials of linseed oil, and 50 lumps of glass. Firstly, you'll need 20 globs of ectoplasm, and these can of course be salvaged from level 68 rare gear or better. Just make sure you use a good salvage kit so that you get those ectos. And if you prefer, you can also loot these from fractal daily chests. Next, you'll need 50 pristine toxic spore samples, and this item is actually sort of a relic from the Living World Season 1, but you can actually still earn this. Just head over to Kessex Hills and look for a toxic offshoot event. This is going to require you to deal with some hallucinations as well as some toxic creatures. I'd recommend having at least one or two other players with you just to help make sure that it's a success. At the end of that event, you'll be able to harvest a toxic shoot and maybe you'll get a pristine toxic spore sample. Now you can farm these events if you're going for the long haul and you don't mind adding this to your daily list of things to do, but they aren't really all that expensive on the trading post since you only need 50 if that's the way you want to go. After that, you'll need another 50 vials of linseed oil, and we already know how to get those, but since we're talking about it again, I will say that there are kind of a lot of flax seeds that you'll need in order to create all of these, so again, if you prefer, farm up some gold and purchase these off the trading post. Finally, you're just going to need 50 lumps of glass, and for this, you'll need a level 400 jeweler. Now, if you don't have a jeweler, again, these can be purchased off the trading post, and they're really not all that expensive either, so you could go that route. But if you have a level 400 jeweler and you'd like to craft these for yourself, you'll just need three piles of coarse sand and one thermal catalytic reagent. As you play that silver waste meta, you're bound to get some piles of silky sand, and anytime you have a stack of 10, you can double click those for a chance at a variety of items, one of which being a pile of coarse sand. Once you've successfully created all four of those items, you can head over to your Huntsman and craft the Vial of Green Goo. 
Once you have your vial of green goo, head over to the Mystic Forge and you can create your preserved Batwing. And while you're still at the Mystic Forge, you might as well just combine all four items required to make the Night Fury. Now, something about the Night Fury that may not be immediately noticeable is that it actually replaces your shoulder skins altogether. You will no longer have a shoulder skin on whatever character you use this on, so if that's a big deal for you, just something I wanted to point out. And that, guys, is actually finally all there is to making the Night Fury. As I said at the beginning, there are quite a few items that go into this, and so it might just be best to kind of set small goals. Try to make each one of these components at a time, rather than worrying about the whole of it or blowing all of your gold on the trading post. That being said, admittedly, I definitely send you guys to the trading post in a lot of these crafting guides, and that's more to do with the nature of Guild Wars 2's loot system than it is with me just being lazy and telling you to buy an item off the trading post. The vast majority of items you're going to loot in Guild Wars are going to be random. They're going to be out of a random bag and you're just going to have to hope you get the items that you need. You can farm specific mobs to get some of these items to drop, but I don't think it's anywhere near as reliable as just farming bags or gold outright. I guess all I'm trying to say is that I set out each time I make these guides to try and save you guys money or make it convenient or at least help you understand but i don't really set out with the thought like oh yeah they could just buy it off the trading post next guide like that's just not that's not what i'm going for here anyway guys thank you so much for watching i hope somebody out there ends up getting this thing eventually i definitely worked on it myself for over a year before finally being able to craft it and it was well worth the wait as always guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one